Salvete amici! In today's video we are going to explore a fascinating notion that probably every fan of Roman history has been thinking about. Could Rome have industrialized and if so, how would an industrialized Roman Empire have looked and how would the world look today in such an alternate reality? Where could the branching point be for this fascinating what-if scenario? Well, dear Amici Imperi Romani, let us explore this fascinating notion together. If you would have asked me 20 years ago when my fascination or more correctly obsession with ancient Rome started, if the Roman Empire could have industrialized, my answer would have been a resounding yes. Was Rome after all not technologically a very advanced society? In the last video, link in the description, we explored the most advanced Roman technologies and we saw that in some regards, as for example in the case of Roman concrete, they were so far ahead of their time that we even copy them today when trying to optimize our own modern day concrete. But then if you would have asked me 10 years later if Rome could have industrialized, you might have gotten a completely different answer. Had Rome not relied on slave labor to accomplish some of their most daring accomplishments? Had not hundreds of slaves worked in quarries to carve out giant pieces of stone for the building of Hadrian's Pantheon in Rome? Had not countless slaves worked in the Roman gold and silver mines in order to obtain the precious metals for the Roman coinage? Had not countless slaves worked to build the Roman Colosseum, the giant Amphitheatrum Flavium? Was it thus not much harder to achieve an industrial revolution in the Roman Empire because of the abundance of cheap mass slave labor, which would render the invention of large machines unnecessary? This was then my viewpoint 10 years ago, that Rome saw no need to industrialize, nay, that it was even disincentivized by Roman authorities because of the mentioned mass abundance of cheap human labor. Meanwhile, having had 10 years more to think about this, I arrived at a more balanced conclusion. In the last video, we talked for example about the first industrial sized flower production factory, which in fact is the first industrial complex of humanity at Barbegal near Arelate. There, Roman engineers had constructed what can be called an ancient mega factory that employed water power to produce 4.5 metric tons of flour every single day for the citizens of the nearby town of Arelate. But there are plenty of other examples where we can see that slave labor was not the answer to every problem of the Roman Empire and that there indeed was the need to construct large and complex machines and even factories of sorts. Other examples are the giant Roman water wheels that were found on many mosaics, telling that the Romans were using water power on a previously unimagined scale. Of course, the Romans were especially interested in complex machinery for the use of warfare. Siege engines, giant ballistas and other machinery would give the Romans a tactical advantage over their adversaries and ensure technological supremacy over the foes of the Imperium. And if you want to learn more about Roman history but you don't have the time to read long and cumbersome books, then we have the perfect solution for you. With Blinkist you can understand powerful ideas of non-fiction books in an extremely fast and efficient way. The app pulls out the key takeaways from long books and puts them into 15 minute text and audio explainers called Blinks. Blinkist has 5000 titles in 27 different categories and of course also condensed books about Roman history. What better way to learn about Roman history while going for a walk or while going to work? This excellent app allows you to understand even the most complex books on for example the fall of the Roman Empire in only about 15 minutes and you can even listen and read at the same time. I for example listened to 12 Caesars by the famous Suetonius himself. This work has hundreds of pages, but on Blinkist I could listen to it in only 24 minutes. The whole history of the 12 rulers of Rome from Caesar himself to Domitian is described in a very precise and entertaining way. Never before was learning about history so fast, efficient and fun. 
you will get a free 7-day trial and 25% off of a premium membership when signing up to Blinkist through our special link in the video description. Don't hesitate and start learning about history or countless other non-fiction topics today with Blinkist. The machines of Archimedes during the siege of Syracuse of 213 and 212 BC were strong in the memories of the Romans, where the inventions of the Greek genius were used quite effectively to sink many Roman warships. We can thus be very sure that the Romans would have absolutely loved the idea of having machines built that would give them an advantage in battle. Another area where the Romans made use of machines is construction. They employed quite complex cranes that were capable of lifting stones that weighed dozens of tons for the construction of their impressive buildings. This is another example where slave labor alone was not sufficient in order to achieve their goals. We can thus be pretty sure that the Romans would have loved the idea of steam-powered machines that would help them to build temples faster, build aqueducts faster, roam the oceans faster on steam-powered triremes, or produce goods of any sort even more efficiently and in larger quantities such as clothing, tablewares or other household goods. In our timeline this did not happen. We do know though that they came remarkably close. From 10 to 70 AD, so in the first century of the Roman emperors, where the power of the imperium was uncontested, there lived a Greek mathematician and genius inventor in Alexandria. Back then Alexandria was the intellectual capital of the empire, which attracted countless scholars of all sorts. Philosophers, mathematicians, rhetoricians, inventors, they all flocked to Alexandria as this city had traditionally boasted the largest amassment of ancient knowledge. Although after the burning of the library of Alexandria during the Roman civil war in 48 BC, a lot of ancient knowledge was destroyed. It is thought that the library continued and was rebuilt. It was part of a larger educational complex, the Musaion. Even though the city's reputation as the intellectual capital of the world started to decline from the 1st century BC onwards, it was still the intellectual capital of the Imperium Romanum in the 1st century AD. Hieron of Alexandria lived there and taught at the Musaion. We talked about his countless inventions in the last video, some of which are really astounding and very modern, such as automatons or programmable theater plays. But his most famous invention is certainly his aeoli pile, which is basically a steam engine precursor. In our timeline, Heron did not understand the groundbreaking potential of this device, he merely viewed it as a toy. But what if in an alternate timeline he did? What if in an alternate reality, by some stroke of genius, he would realize what could be done with his invention, how the power of steam could be harnessed in order to convert that power into motion, in order to propel ships, or in order to automatize production of goods in factories, or in order to build steam-powered carriages that would travel along the huge Roman road network? This will serve as a branching point for our considerations. And please like the video for the algorithm and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos on everything related to the late Roman Empire. Gratias agutibi amici. It is thus in my opinion with Heron of Alexandria where we could have seen the highest probability for a branching point to occur where this new timeline would deviate from ours. In this alternate timeline Heron had the idea that the Aeoli pile could be modified such as to harness its power and transform it into usable force. He started experimenting around with new designs. How could the rotational motion be made more powerful? How could the power of the steam be harnessed more effectively? He came up with a new design, not too dissimilar from the first steam engine designs of the late 17th and early 18th century of our timeline. He worked for years on his engine, he abandoned some designs, refined others, and after years of work, he thought that his engine was ready to be tested. And what better way to test his new engine than on a Roman trireme? 
Helped by his students at the Museion and some slaves, he installed the first steam engine onto a trireme in the year 60 AD. The first tries were modest, but the later tries were more and more successful. In the year 62 AD, the first steam-powered trireme was thus finished. Coal was being burned on board, the resulting heat would make steam in a vessel expand. This steam would then rush through narrow conduits, setting the large water wheels in motion that would then propel the ship. Tales of his invention quickly reached Rome and other cities of the empire. Soon the Roman navy would pick up on this and start equipping more ships with steam propulsion. This new Roman navy would have a supreme technological advantage over other ships of that time, making the Roman Empire even more of a naval superpower. In other parts of the empire, new inventors would emerge, copying the works of the legendary Heron of Alexandria, who by now was famous throughout the empire. The first steam-powered carriages were started to be built. Goods could now be transported along the Roman road network faster than ever before, leading to an increase in trade and thus wealth. Inventors and entrepreneurs throughout the empire would now try to build new inventions. A true age of innovation had started, supported by this new, more efficient economy. Coal mining became even more important, with huge quantities of coal being mined in the coal mines of the Imperium and brought to the large cities. The first factories were built in the cities in order to increase the output of manufactured goods. Now one would see chimneys rising up in the cities of the empire from the 2nd century AD onwards. Roman temples and architecture in the foreground, with a backdrop of industry, would now be a sight not so uncommon in the larger cities of the Roman Empire. Heron, who by now was deceased, had spread his knowledge to his disciples at the Museion. Some of these would start experimenting with their own ideas and inventions, based on the prior work by Heron. Enabled by faster travel through the empire, ideas would now also spread much faster than before. In this timeline, due to the empire's technological supremacy, Germanic tribes would have a much harder time harassing the empire's borders. New steam-powered military machines would be employed, giving the empire the ability to defend its borders more effectively. Also, the flourishing economy would enable higher tax revenue and a more stable currency. Therefore, in this timeline, a debasement of the currency would not occur as it did in ours. By around 200 AD, the first experiments with electricity would start. In the workshop of Lucius Cornelius Abiatus, it was said that one could witness strange phenomena, where he would awe spectators with regular demonstrations of his new electrical power, the power of the electrum as he called it. The first lamp of electrum was constructed by him in 214 AD. In the mid-3rd century, we would see the first electrum light installations in Rome and later in other cities of the empire. A marvel of Roman technology, Rome would now be illuminated even at night. But what impact would this have on the traditional Greco-Roman religion? Would new cults emerge that would worship the gods of the Electrum? Would a new cult of technology worshippers emerge? We can only speculate, but it might also be that the old gods would be continued to be worshipped. The energy for the illuminations would be provided by coal power plants. Of course, this would have an impact on the atmosphere and air pollution would start to become a problem. The road network would start to be built out, allowing for faster travel, but now railroad networks would start to be developed, with steam locomotives propelling trains as in our timeline. The first telegraph systems would be invented, allowing for a much faster spread of information and thus ideas. Enabled by this surge in technological developments, other fields would also experience advances. Medicine would make huge leaps, thus increasing the average lifespans of Roman citizens. In this timeline, the reign of the five good emperors would accordingly be much longer than in ours, because they would enjoy a much better health. Therefore, the crisis of the 3rd century would not happen and the Pax Romana would last well into the 3rd century AD. 
In such an advanced Roman Empire, the development of gunpowder would only be a matter of time, giving the Imperium even more of an advantage over its neighboring Germanic tribes and also over the Persians, and allowing the Empire to grow even further with relative ease. In this timeline, we might have seen the strange sight of gunpowder legionnaires or musketeer legionnaires. How exactly a word would look in AD 2022 where this would have happened is impossible to know. Even shortly after Heron's first hypothetical steam-powered machines, this timeline could already look vastly different from ours. How such Roman technological advancements would affect the rest of the world can also only be speculated about, and the underlying problems of Roman society would not be solved automatically by the progress of technology. The slave system would still be extremely unfair, inequality would still be rampant, and would even grow with many new entrepreneurs making fortunes because of these new inventions. Corruption would still exist, gladiators would still die in the arenas of the empire, but it is conceivable that the technological advancements would also lead to societal advancements as in our timeline. Some sort of new moral code might have been developed by the thinkers of the empire, ideas such as the enlightenment in our timeline that coincided with technological advancements might also have happened in some form in this alternate reality. Only by that could the Roman Empire survive, it would have needed to be reformed on a fundamental level. An unsolved succession system, corruption, slave labor and extreme inequality would greatly contribute to the fall of the Roman Empire in our timeline. Thus, only if these problems would be solved, could the empire survive. Democratic movements might have happened at some point, but we could also imagine a civil war, similar to the American Civil War, where the question of slave labor led to a clash of two ideologies. Could we have seen something similar in the Roman Empire? Would the more industrialized side win, spreading their ideas of equality and human rights through the rest of the empire? Even a technologically superior empire would collapse sooner or later if the fundamental questions would not be solved and it would not collapse by external threats but by constant civil wars. But it is conceivable that the Roman Empire of this timeline could have developed similar ideas of basic human rights and equality and even have seen some form of democratic movements. If that would have happened, the Roman Empire might have survived and then it would go on to colonize the new world in their steamships and it might expand its borders even further. As it would have grown so large, it is quite likely that it would have split apart into smaller units, smaller sub-empires of sorts, all with slightly different cultures and ideologies. But a western empire could have remained, still centered around Rome. By 500 AD, the city of Rome of this timeline could have developed into a hardly recognizable, technologically very advanced city, only the old base level reminding travelers of the ancient history of the city, with new mega buildings towering above the old temples, many of which would certainly have been demolished to make way for more imposing structures. By 1000 AD already, this world could quite possibly be far ahead technologically speaking as compared to the 2022 AD of our timeline. Would the Romans then colonize the Moon, Mars and the other planets of the solar system? Quite possibly, yes. These people would still understand themselves as Romans since if the Roman Empire had not fallen, all the Germanic kingdoms of our timeline would not have happened. No France, no Britain or Germany only the Western Roman Empire and the other split away empires, but these would also be based on a very Romanized society. Faraway kingdoms and empires would have also industrialized through trade with the multiple Roman empires. In this timeline thus, we might have seen the flag of Rome be planted on the moon, almost a thousand years before the date in our timeline, since the Dark Ages would not have happened saving us thousand years of technological decline and having to rediscover the old knowledge and technologies. 
It is fascinating to think about this what-if scenario and something similar might have happened had Heron of Alexandria understood the groundbreaking potential of his Aeolipile. But he did not. And therefore this timeline did not happen, but ours happened. Rome never industrialized and the Western Empire already fell 400 years after Heron's death. And much of the ancient knowledge, technology and engineering was lost and had to be rediscovered in a long and brutal process where humanity would fall back to a technological level similar to that of the Bronze Age and where humanity would have to rediscover even the most basic of inventions. In post-Roman Britannia, for example, even the most basic form of pottery production was forgotten or building with concrete or houses with tiled roofs everything had to be rediscovered in a long and laborious process. We can thus only wonder where we would be now if Heron had understood the true potential of his Iolipile. Thank you for watching this video dear viewers and a big thanks especially to our dear supporters on Patreon and to our supporters via the YouTube membership. You people are awesome and the whole Majorianus team is super thankful for your support. And we strongly suggest to watch our previous video on the 10 most incredible Roman technologies to see that the Romans really were not so far away from an industrial revolution. Or if you are more interested in Roman architecture, we suggest you the other video about the last great building activity in Rome. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history and to all who are like me absolutely fascinated by the late Roman Empire. Gratias amici imperi romani and bene vale.